The first thing we're going to do in this video is take a look at one wall on a mobile home to give you an idea of how the T111 is actually installed or the plywood siding. Now the gray area you're looking at is the building paper. This would be the moisture resistant barrier. This goes on first and then of course we have a piece of Z-bar metal that will run along the bottom of the plywood siding or the T111. Here's our first piece of T111 plywood siding and basically will sit on top of the metal and of course it will be going over the building paper. This the building paper actually prevents any moisture that will get behind the siding it will drain in this case since it's wrapped all the way to the bottom the moisture will drain all the way to the bottom of the mobile home any moisture that gets um, that goes down to the bottom of the plywood will uh, it, it will roll over the next piece of plywood or the next piece of trim everything works its way down now you can always stop the paper right above the z-bar uh, the metal or it would be even with the bottom of the plywood if this was the case you would run a strip about 16 inches wide from the bottom of the floor joist and you'd run it parallel to the bottom of the mobile home and then install the metal z-bar over that and then you would start the paper at the same place where the bottom of the plywood would start on the metal and you could actually use that to give you two different ways for the uh, water to drain off kind of some extra protection if you have any uh, questions about that feel free to leave them in the comment area and I will try to make another video as I would throw that in in this next picture we're looking at the bottom trim board fascia board and uh, this will go underneath the the z-bar metal and you can see when I zoom in on it here that any water that got behind the, that uh, went down on the front of the plywood wouldn't really go underneath very far it would uh, drain over the metal and then of course down the edge of the fascia in the next picture we're going to use uh, straight edges you can just use some straight 2 by 4s or a level and of course you wouldn't need to you could use them one on each side to mark the bottom of the area where you are going to be driving some stakes in. Now I'm going to try and provide you with a few different ways to do this at the end of the video um, maybe do like a little series because there are other ways you can do this this is just one of them. We're going to zoom in and take a look at the bottom here. Now, how you figure out where this is, where to drive the stakes is actually uh, relatively easy. You're going to, since you're going from the front of the plywood siding, you're going to, <coughs> you're going to, I should say, add the plywood siding, which is three quarters of an inch, to the new plywood siding, which is three quarters of an inch there's an inch and a half and then you're going to add a quarter of an inch to to set the plywood back a little further and so right now that would give us uh, an inch and three quarters and then you're going to add an inch and a half for the board that we're going to fasten to the stakes that's relatively simple don't forget you can always watch parts of the video over again for more clarification and uh, don't forget when you can drive a stake at each end and then use a string to create a nice straight line so that you can drive the rest of your stakes in and, uh, and, and just make sure that everything is going to be straight. But you can always use a straight edge. And as you see, we have the few stakes in there. Stakes, maybe put them about three or four foot on center, something like that. This is just going to be to hold the bottom board. You can see that we attached a two by four to the bottom and it's off the ground at least an inch maybe two inches would be fine you uh, and here we attach the top blocks with another two by four to give us something nice to nail to now this 
here is about uh, a 16 inch to a 24 inch piece of skirting that we're working with. If the skirting is going to be a little larger, then you're probably going to have to put a few more boards in or do it, do it a little different. But I'm going to try and make another video on that to give you a better idea. But there you go. Cut the skirting. Slip it up underneath the area there underneath the trim. You can see where the water here, if it goes over the trim that is installed on the mobile home, that it's going to drip and uh, won't, it won't really be curving back up. If we attach the if we move the plywood siding that we're using for the skirt board, if we move it a little closer to the fascia board, then the water could actually travel underneath and above the plywood. I know it sounds like it's impossible, but trust me, it can actually roll over it. That quarter inch gap or an eighth of an inch gap would uh, be nice. And the next thing, don't caulk it. You know, don't uh, put, put a gap in there, a quarter inch gap, and then caulk it either. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and try and make another video to give you uh, a few other ways that you can do something like this. And of course, I'm going to try and make some with the aluminum siding also, which would be the most common uh, if you're going to have had an aluminum siding mobile home and then wanted to put a plywood skirting around it.